From the first few hours Jackie Waller went missing, police started looking at her estranged husband, Clay Waller. But still, the suspected killer ran free. Were you in fear of your own safety? Was I afraid of Clay? <laughs> no, I was wishing to God he would come up here. Nearly five months after Jackie disappeared, Clay was arrested on a federal charge for threatening her sister online. And that's not all, according to prosecutor Angel Woodruff. In a situation like this where you have a major crime, if it gets to the point where your primary suspect appears to be a danger to the community, then we start looking really hard at anything we can charge him with. And at the same time, Clay is busted for making those threats. Investigators also dig up allegations of stealing over $50,000 from a previous job and harassing a former friend. Before Clay is taken away, detectives try to learn more about Jackie's disappearance. Hey, Jackie. About as good as I can be. As he's done since the beginning, Clay denies his involvement, claiming he's the real victim here. And Jack Ram. And if, 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 if you guys know so much, figure it out. I don't know what to tell you. I have nothing to do with nothing. That's just... In fact, he has his own theories pointing the finger for whatever happened to his wife at a former associate named Gary. He killed my wife. He killed her. And he, and he, knows, he knows I can prove it eventually. The problem with that is police have already disproven it. His stories have all run out and are alibi. The world crumbling around you. You're self-destructed by your own needs. At the end of it all, Clay stands firm that he did not kill his wife, even claiming to have proof that will exonerate him. I don't know where she's at. Come in. Clay eventually pleads guilty to the federal charge of threatening Jackie's sister and is sentenced to five years behind bars. At the same time, prosecutors work to make sure he will also face justice for Jackie. We couldn't even prove that she was dead. So we scraped together every single bit of circumstantial evidence that we could until we got to the point where, okay, we're ready. The blood in his house, the surveillance videos, the fact that Clay actively tried to hinder the investigation, this blood. And there was so much more. After nearly two years of turning over every rock, prosecutors finally felt comfortable enough to prove their case. He was charged with murder in the first degree and tampering with physical evidence. But despite Woodruff's best efforts, without a body, getting a conviction was no guarantee. There's no such thing as a slam dunk case. Plus, even though Jackie's family wanted Clay to face the stiffest punishment possible, there was something else they wanted more. Stan and Ruby Rawson indicated that the most important thing to them was to get Jackie back. So when Clay's attorneys approached prosecutors to make a deal... We told them, we will accept a plea because we want to find her. You want Jackie home? We want her home. The deal was Clay Waller would plead guilty to second degree murder and accept a sentence of 20 years in exchange for revealing what he did with Jackie. It came right down until the time when he was going to go on trial, then he realized that he was pretty well cooked. When the time came, Clay would lead investigators right back to a place they'd searched before, a remote sandbar on the Illinois side of the Mississippi River known as Devil's Island. Knowing Clay and how we dealt with him for two years, we weren't 100% sure that he was telling us the truth. So we were still pessimistic about being able to locate her. And when the team got to the location, Clay only reinforced those fears. He couldn't pinpoint where she was at. <clears throat> it was a large area that he says, well, she's here somewhere. Then, a clue in one of the gruesome details of Clay's crime. One key thing he had told us was he had put a bag of fertilizer on her body when he buried her. One of the detectives indicated if you have too much fertilizer, it kills the roots of a tree. And that's when they see it. One of my detectives and Agent Ritter was studying the area and they saw three trees and one of the trees was completely dead. And there, buried under that tree, the end of one very long road. Was Jackie dug up by hand out there? Yes, I did it myself. We started to dig down and, and we first found 
uh, her knee. Uh, we could feel the skeletal remains with the blue jeans. And the next day we recovered her and uh, it was the first step of, for her trip home. Not the homecoming anyone really wanted, but at least one part of the mystery was solved. And then it hit us that we now we had to tell the kids, that we had to tell them that their mommy was dead and that their dad did it. And what was their reaction? We just all cried together. And then we just assured them that we would love them and take care of them and that we would do our best to raise them. That's Cheryl and her husband Bob sitting in silence with the triplets as their mother is finally laid to rest. I'll leave you now for a little while for a home that awaits us all. Where her funeral was on the day of our 50th wedding anniversary. But there was still another part of Clay's plea agreement left to fulfill. As part of his deal to get just 20 years for murdering his wife, Clay would have to confess on camera to every brutal detail of his crime. How exactly was Jackie murdered? Well. Coming up. They indicated you had dug a hole already. Jackie's last moments alive in the killer's own words. She went straight to the ground. Clay says the wheels were really set in motion the year before Jackie died when she first started talking about splitting up. 